<laughs> Hello there. Hi, Leon. Okay. Welcome so, to Marin County in California. Brigitte and Julianne. Julianne and Brigitte. And as you can see, we're in the backyard of a beautiful home here. We've just been in Marin County, which is uh, just a little bit north of San Francisco, where we did an amazing weekend workshop. And our intention was that uh, we are going to record a podcast episode. As many of you know, a podcast is an audio, which uh, is available for free. But we both woke up this morning. I've got a sore throat. And poor old Jules. <laughs> I've had a head cold for <laughs> about a day now. And so we're not really in the space to be able to do the podcast as we'd intended. But we're, st <laughs> we're still really excited to connect with you. And we want to talk a little bit about um, the weekend because it was very different. It was very spectacular, but in a different way. Yeah. And... Um, as I said, we're in Marin, so I'd just like to introduce you to Shima, who's our organizer in Marin. And there she is. And she's organized workshops for us many times in this area. And she's going to be moving to Mount Shasta very shortly. Yeah. <laughs> so more and more of the Stargate people seem to be landing in Mount Shasta, which is very interesting. Maybe we're going to take over the whole town. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Take over the town. Hmm. Okay, so let's tell them a little bit about the, the weekend. Okay, so <coughs> as many of you know, this weekend we had a physicist come to take energy measurements of the Stargate. So Two physicists. One actually, of them was yeah. a, a nuclear physicist, no less. Uh huh. And Dr. Uh -huh. Beverly Rubick is the one who we hired to do this study. And um, they are, they are both the most um, awesome scientists I think I've yeah. ever met. Um, totally open to this whole realm that we're working with. And we were actually really surprised because we found them through this energy measurement device website. We didn't look too much into them, and it turns out that they are just the perfect people to do these studies because they're so open to uh, metaphysics and actually um, Dr. Beverly Rubick in particular and, and her partner, Harry, they're both um, like excited about the Stargate mm. after the weekend, which mm. is just so thrilling. So the study was done with a little device called a BioWell. And it's fascinating because what we did was, well, it's actually two different measurements. One was a, a group of 15 people that were almost randomly chosen from the whole group. And before the workshop started, they measured their energy and they did it with their finger. They put their finger in this little measuring device. They put all their fingers in one at a time. And this device actually measures the gas that's discharged <laughs> From your finger. Can you imagine that? Like, okay. The gas is coming off <laughs> our fingers. The really amazing thing about <laughs> this is from that data, they extrapolate it using um, acupuncture lines. And they're actually able to get such clear and precise information about the health of your organ systems that in Russia, this is actually used as a diagnostic tool. Yeah, so they can was, literally pinpoint where your body is in balance or out of balance. Yeah, this was developed by uh, a Russian scientist, wasn't it? Karatkov, yes. I always allow Jules to say that because I can never quite get it right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're really thrilled about this. So we had the before measurement done before the workshop and we had the after done as we were doing the final channeling of, of the first day. And so... Beverly is now going to take that information and already they're excited because they see the changes that happen for people. And in fact, Ashley, who some of you know, mentioned that the reading that uh, they'd done on Ashley, um, before her energy was very spiky and afterwards it's all very round and smooth. So 
what exactly that means, I'm not sure. <laughs> Other than it was really good. It means that essentially everything's become a, like more balanced. And they can actually give you information about your different organs and how they're functioning, and, and it's fascinating. So we're really excited to see the, the analysis that comes from this. Um, Beverly mentioned just briefly um, a few things. Okay, so we also had the energy in the room being measured by this device called Sputnik. Sputnik. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like this little metal ball with like spikes all around it. And it um, is measuring like a baseline energy. And as we put the Stargate up, the energy in the room starts to gently get stronger. But the really cool thing was we told um, Dr. Rubik that we were about to activate it and so she could make a timestamp a note and she said that just with us saying that we were going to activate it before we actually verbally went through the process of activating it the energy started to spike in the room just with our intention just with the intention the stargate was responding yeah so it's a beautiful <laughs> demonstration mm. And it turns out the Stargate's real. <laughs> yeah. Now it's scientifically real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was really it was wonderful. Ah, so that was um, so that was what the measurements that we were the doing before after <laughs> measurements of the participants. Yeah, I see lots of hearts. Um, um, Dr. Rubik was saying that before. Um, that essentially she just mentioned two things and one was she said some people are showing like more balance and then she said some people definitely went into altered states mm -hmm. so that's kind of intriguing to me and i'm excited to see what exactly she saw mm -hmm. with that and she's actually going to publish an article about the experience and she was so touched by her own personal experience that she stayed and participated in the workshop the second day. And she said that she's going to be doing a conference in Chicago mm -hmm. about the energy of a pyramid. And now she's going to be talking about the Stargate there as well because she was so blown away by her experience and the energy that she felt. Mm. So we're, we just had an amazing weekend, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And so we're cleansing now. So we're, <laughs> we're both uh, having colds and sore throats and things, which is for those that have just recently joined us. Um, we said at the beginning that we're not actually going to be doing the podcast report recording because our throats aren't feeling very good. And we both have kind of like fevers and yeah, we look bright and shiny because we're happy to be with you all. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we will be doing it next week um so next, next tuesday again yeah and we're excited about this topic because what we're wanting to explore is the nature of reality mm. so we're kind of like born into these bodies and all we really know for the most part i mean a lot of people who are drawn to the stargate have always had some connection to the beyond but for the most part we're told like you're just a biological organism this is all there is baby hang on tight and you know enjoy the ride but really there's the beauty of the stargate experience and other entry points including there's a physics discipline that's actually looking at the question of like is this reality more like a virtual reality mm. and um there are people who have near-death experiences that give very distinctive hints that there's something more and then there's also pretty much every single person on earth's intuition that they are something more than just the body mm. Mm. So we're going to be exploring that next week in the podcast episode. Yeah, we did it. Um, we one of the meditations. That, in fact, was it the last meditation that we did on the weekend? Was very fascinating because it was, in a way, it was introducing people to literally being guided out of the body, the consciousness being guided out of the body. And there's actually a link that uh, Julianne has posted it's actually at the top at of the this top facebook there, the, live the tunnel tunnel of light meditation link so you can actually meditate with that as well if you like so 
yeah, go ahead. So <clears throat> when um, we made this connection with Dr. Raymond Moody, who is, um, the New York Times calls him the father of the near-death experience. I believe he coined the term near-death experience, actually. Not 100% sure about that. I should probably look into it. But um, <laughs> But we were really excited about working with him because... To me, it represents an opportunity to look at what are some of the things that do happen to people when they leave their body temporarily. Mm. But also, it's like we have the Stargate, which creates this high vibrational energy field, <laughs> which has this consciousness that is holding the 12th dimensional energy field. So it's what can we do with that in terms of bringing, because all almost all of the near death or shared death experiences that people have they have some level of just beauty and love and high vibration and super consciousness so really for us it's this opportunity to bring some of those higher realms using the portal that the stargate is to bring them here mm. and to explore that as a potential and we were it felt completely new and amazing and and this actually came through over the weekend with this tunnel of light meditation yeah it was um it was very interesting afterwards we asked for comments and and there was kind of a silence and a stillness in the room and then one of the main things that um people responded to was this level of clarity that they felt Mm. after the meditation, just feeling very clear, very present in the body. Wow, this beautiful butterfly is flying around right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see that. Yeah. So we were very touched and very excited about it because this meditation is, in a way, it's a, the way that Alcazar works is that he kind of prepares us for things. Mm -hmm. And we're about to do this mini-series with uh, Dr. Raymond Moody, and his focus, as Jules said, is the near-death experiences. And so this was almost like guiding people into moving out consciously, moving out of the body without having to go through this near-dying process. Well, this is what Alcazar kept saying is you don't have to almost die in order to have a conscious experience of the beyond. Mm. And in this meditation, he was actually bringing this tunnel of light or... <laughs> chamber of light here actually with each person kind of bringing it to themselves and he said if you're adventurous you can move through it but mm. really our intention is to bring it to you mm. and what was also very fascinating we didn't realize it at the time but there was a an older gentleman there who'd had a near-death experience when he was five years old mm -hmm. and his parents had died and in this meditation, he said he went out again and he met his parents. He was in tears. He said he hadn't seen his parents for, I can't remember how long it was, but he was so touched that he actually met his parents in the meditation. Yeah, so he and a few other people had some pretty profound experiences. And actually, it's kind of interesting because I was when I went to go export this meditation so that we could share it with you, I was like, oh no, it's, the sound is distorted. And I was like, they're probably all like that from this weekend. But as far as I can tell, it's just this one tunnel of light meditation that had a distortion in the sound. So this is very interesting in terms of one of these phenomena that's just like, actually kind of a huge bummer. <laughs> I thought for a minute we wouldn't be able to share it with you, but we felt it was so profound that we wanted to share it with you. Yeah. And so um, if you do listen to it, please excuse the distortions in the sound. Yeah, because it, it just gave such a strong experience. So make sure if, you, if you're going to do it that you actually meditate to it, not just listen to it. And um, create an etheric stargate for yourself before mm -hmm. you actually go into it because, um, because it was in a live workshop. We were already in the energy field. For those of you who are not sure how to create an etheric stargate, uh, it's one of the free meditations on our free 
medi- free audio page on yeah. our website. So you can go to the stargateexperience.com and then go to the free content, free meditations. Yeah. But you can also just with for those of you who have done it before, it's as easy as with your intention inviting the consciousness of the stargate to come and form around you and imagining this pyramid structure. You don't have to perfectly know what the stargate looks like. Really mm. pure intent will do it because we live in a intelligent universe mm. and in a benevolent universe. It's amazing what's beginning to open up. One of the things that Alcazar has been saying recently is there's such a vast arena of experiences that are just waiting for us to open up to experience. He says, why are you still focused on these limitations and little problems and habits in your life when you could be exploring these incredible realms? So he's, he's, yeah, <laughs> he's really encouraging us to go beyond what we've known before. And so I'm really excited as this, it really felt when we woke up on Monday morning, Pragit was like elated. He, I remember I was like just waking up out of bed and he was talking to Vareen, his, his best mate about um, feeling like euphoric. Mm. And it's like, I felt that way too. It's like, we've just taken another step somehow. And it's, it's one of the most exciting things about doing this work. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, in, this just this in, euphoric is a really great word. It was just like so much joy and excitement, not really knowing what I was so blissed about, but just yeah. feeling this incredible energy of bliss. And yeah. it, it, as Jill said, it was just this feeling of something just shifted, something moved forward. And I think it's a preparation for these three uh, mini-series webinars that we're going to do with Dr. Moody and that's this weekend, isn't it? Is yeah, it? it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday yeah. at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah. So if you can, join us for that because we are really excited for the further development of bringing the exploration of these realms. Because we'll be doing meditations, and I think this is probably the little teaser for what's about to come in these three days. That's a teaser. I'm like, all in. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... It, it's the three one. Is it one and a half hours? Yeah. Yeah. Three yeah. one and a half hour experiences on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, and I wanted to share with you for those of you who do listen to this tunnel of light meditation. Um, oh, look at all these little hearts! I know, isn't oh. that great? We really how are you doing that? that? I don't know much about <laughs> Facebook, but <laughs> look! At, oh, look! Look! Hey, <laughs> thank you, more thank you for this more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's really, really nice. sweet. Yeah. Wow. Oh, look. <laughs> Woo. Uh, okay. What were you going to say? <laughs> I was going to say. Um, Sorry. I was just fascinated uh, by that. Um, part of my preparation for uh, learning. Woo. Yeah, yeah, I know, right? Isn't it amazing? <laughs> yeah. Life is good. It is beautiful out here. It's one of these like paradise days um in the san francisco bay area so Mm. we're really happy to connect with you all i just wanted to mention there's this excerpt from a book and it's such a beautiful book about a woman whose older brother like very suddenly dies and she's really 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 torn up about it and then he starts to communicate with her arranges all this synchronicity to prove to her that it's real and then he starts bringing through the most beautiful information from the beyond and so Mm. this tunnel of light meditation is actually inspired by his description of what happened to him being sucked into what he calls a chamber of light Mm. because every direction he looked there was just light for as far as he could see so i'll actually um share that excerpt with you in um i'll put it into that soundcloud link under the info part so that you can see it and it's also posted in the academy Mm. already it's one of those things that you read and you get an energy from it yeah yeah for those of you that are not part of the stargate academy facebook group we would suggest you join that because that's where people write about their personal experiences in the meditations and in the workshops and in the various programs that we have and it's really 
helpful to see the vast array of experiences that people are having. Yeah. So we're really excited <laughs> about this, and we're uh, <laughs> we're happy to connect with you all. It feels really good. Mm. We always feel so good after we do these um, Facebook yeah. lives or webinars. Huh, and so very shortly, we're going to be jumping into our car and driving back to Mount Shasta. Yep. And look, it's always nice to get back and sleep in our own beds. Indeed. So, <laughs> so for those of you who might have just hopped onto this Facebook Live, um, just to let you know, we're going to be doing this podcast episode about the nature <laughs> of reality and exploring other realities next week next Tuesday at 11 a.m. So join us then. And until then, we'll be drinking hot cocoa, <laughs> tea, Lemonade. lots of fluids, Lemonade, yeah. <laughs> recovering from our head colds. Mm, mm. I don't know why hot cocoa came up. I don't, I don't. think that's probably very <laughs> no, that's good. That's definitely not a good thing. Uh, anyway, <laughs> if you're fascinated by this other, these other realities, come join us for this, uh, this three-day webinar. Yeah. Okay, much love to you. It's really, really so appreciated that you join us and you support us in this way and that you help us continue sharing all this wisdom of Alcazar and the Stargate. So thank you for all those beautiful hearts that are popping up at the side. We love you too. Yeah, we love your beautiful hearts. <laughs> yeah. And Shima wants to say goodbye as well. <laughs> Yeah, she said, like, come join us next time. We have the, the mics, so. Uh, <laughs> take care. See you again soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh.